Today is Tuesday, November the 6th, 2012. I'm Matthew TG. I'm Tony Casey. I suppose you're wondering where Heath Mulliken is. We'll tell you in a moment. Welcome to the Technology Show. This is a weekly podcast featuring technology, theology, and everything in between. This is episode 179. So I jumped into the chat room, which I don't normally do, and uh, right away I saw the question from Seth Cotton, where is Heath? So (laughs) Heath is feeling a little under the weather today. Um, By a little under the weather, we mean he's... He's huggling the porcelain. He's hugging the porcelain <laughs> throne. Uh, has been for a couple days now. <laughs> and yesterday, let, yesterday he FaceTimes me, and I think he's doing me a favor by letting me know how sick he is. And it's like he could have called that in. I, mean, I didn't need a FaceTime of him. Wow, I mean, a text, a text li- would do. A li- <laughs> exactly. exactly. Live video feed. Yeah. So we'll be pulling that feed in for you all uh, <laughs> at some point during the show. <laughs> that voice you just heard is our guest today. Now this is cool. The day of the election, we have the president in studio. Mm-hmm. Dr. Wow. Ta- yeah, Dr. Todd Voss, president of Southern Wesleyan <laughs> University. That would impress me if I only knew it wasn't me. So. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we appreciate you uh, stepping in. Actually, uh, we've been uh, telling people, announcing that someone else was going to be here today. They dropped out on us last Monday. We contacted you last Tuesday. You're gracious enough to step in, and so we appreciate you being with Glad us today. Glad to be here. All right. Uh, before we get into our interview with um, uh, Dr. Voss, there uh, were a couple emails uh, from Paul Tillman this week. And, and first, let me say this. We appreciate so much li- uh, hearing from our listeners, yeah. um, the way you interact with the show. If you don't remember, last week we had Dr. Emery White on this show, and we talked about his book, What They Didn't Teach You in Seminary. And we were talking about how the model for seminary needed to change. And so... Paul Tillman wasn't able to be with us live, and so he's reacting to the show while he's listening to it. So yeah. he sent two emails to Matthew. Yeah, sending us emails. Well, send it to the show, to the show, and I forward it on to you. Okay. Uh, as he's watching, he's emailing his, his reaction to it, which is great. Yeah, so I'm going to read both emails. So the first one said this. I missed the live stream of the episode with James Emery White. I'm seven minutes in and yelling at my computer because every shortcoming or false expectation that's being given regarding seminary, I feel was addressed in Wesley Seminary MDiv program. The program challenges academically as well as provides practical pastoring tools. Every semester we had a required spiritual formation class. I wouldn't call seminary a mountaintop experience, but I did have an encouraging cohort and mentors slash professors to climb the mountain with. I'm sure they didn't teach me everything I need to know. Nobody could do that. But we spent less time learning Greek and and far more time learning to build our community. So then he follows up with a second email. Second email. So now I'm 28 minutes in and I hear, quote, the seminary needs to come to the church, end quote. And again, I'm yelling, Wesley Seminary! (laughs) Online courses for pastors in ministry to stay in ministry. Electives at church sites like 12 Stone. If I don't hear a Wesley Seminary plug by the end of this episode, (laughs) well, I guess it's my own fault for missing the live stream. Yeah, wow. And true, very true, very true. We're, we're, We're refraining from talking about Wesley Seminary, we're trying to get some advertising dollars, <laughs> and we will mention them like crazy. So, uh, Paul, you can help us out in that way, maybe. No, it's, it, 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 Paul, we appreciate you writing in. I mean, you make great points because uh, James Emery White, these are the exact things that he was saying that at, at Mecklenburg Community Church, they're trying to partner with Gordon Cronwell and bring the seminary to church. And, uh, and we did bring up 12 Stone because 12 Stone is also... <clears throat> That's one of Kevin's big deals, yeah. Uh, and they're they're really pushing for that too. And we did mention them at one point. I don't know that yeah, we ever we mentioned Wesley Seminary explicitly. We didn't. And at that time, I wasn't quite sure of the Wesley Seminary connection. So, thank you, Paul. And uh, I would just say to all our listeners, we love this kind of feedback. Please continue to send us emails. Better yet, uh, call our voicemail service and leave us a voicemail there. We'd be glad to Absolutely. play it on the air. All right. Uh, well. Um, Todd, uh, great having you in studio. As we start, 
perhaps we have some listeners that aren't familiar with Southern Wesleyan University. So just kind of give a description uh, of the school, its campuses, and what's going on right now with that institution. Sure, be glad to. Thanks, Thanks for asking. Southern is uh, 106 going on 107 years old. And uh, it is a very faithful institution, uh, one of the five that are owned by the Wesleyan Church. Uh, we have uh, the main campus in Central, South Carolina. Most people get that confused, thinking it's uh, meaning the middle of the state, and Central yeah. is the name of the town, yeah. South Carolina. Uh, and uh, the main campus has uh, about six, 700 students uh, in that range, and, and uh, the, uh, uh, it's a traditional campus with residence halls and all of the amenities. Uh, in addition to that, we have um, uh, adult sites. Uh, our AGS program is uh, a little over 25 years old. Uh, we were one of the first uh, in the South to offer um, yeah. a, uh, a concentrated adult program. So we have uh, sites not only in Central uh, and in Greenville, but also in Columbia and in um, North Augusta and in Charleston. Uh, we also use some space in other locations like in Spartanburg. So, um, and that program uh, has, has really been a successful program, a great program for Southern in so many ways because uh, it has, uh, it's really um, brought an opportunity for adult students to be able to continue their educational uh, process uh, close to home and yeah. fitting in with their schedule. So yeah. a great program. We have about uh, 1,300 students, 1,200 students in that program. Uh, and uh, and that again is one of those things that needs to morph and change in time and uh, and and remain very current. So yeah, you and I were talking in the pre-show that uh, I've had not really with the adult graduates program. I haven't had experience there, but I'm teaching a master's level class this semester at Southern, and just some really great inspirational stories among um, our adult students and their yeah. appreciation for. The programs that are being offered by yeah. the university. Well, you know, the unique component, uh, there are several, but the, the one that to me is the most important is the integration of faith and learning yeah. in that adult program. And, and students know it's a Christ-centered program. And uh, so it, it knocks the competition out of the way when you start talking about that, because uh, there are so many for-profit and other kinds of programs out there that uh, just don't have that, that strong uh, Christ-centered approach. And and these families are being impacted by this program. I mean, families are being brought together, and and uh, and it's an incredible thing when you start to see change occur uh, because of an educational process. Yeah. Uh, but change occur in in family structures and systems and marriages, and uh, it's it's just it is an absolute ministry. Yeah, the growth process. Uh, also, too, it's great. You know, I've, I've taught at the college level and then, you know, in a graduate situation. And the nice thing about the graduate setting or older students is they have so much life experience that they bring to the classroom and they know what questions to ask. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. And, you know, the, uh, the other thing they about... They challenge the, you as a oh, professor. Uh. They really do. And, and, and often they come with trepidation, wondering if they can make it. Yeah. And uh, usually a course or two in, and they go, yeah, I, this is doable, I, I think. And it's fascinating how, how adults discount their intellect and their ability to be able to uh, work in a classroom again. But it revitalizes these people. I mean, they, I mean, they come home with new insights, and they just want to share it with everybody. So I love adult students, uh, just great, uh, great people that are growing and want to share it with the world. So. Yeah. Uh, let me take a bit of a time out here. I know this is technical, but we've had to set up. We have a whole new setup here, and Matthew's had to try to get stuff uh, in line on the run. Um, later on in the interview, I'd like yeah. to talk to Dr. Voss about the Mitchell Nicholson project. Oh, yeah, let me find that. Yeah, okay. if you would, and I'll just hold off on that because okay. I, I want the people to see that. When we had you last on the show, it's been, I think, um, I think it's been about a year. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so when you were here last uh, Southern Wesleyan was in the process of trying to switch from NAIA to yeah. NCAA Division II. So talk about that and where the university is now. This is one exciting process. I tell you, the, uh, we started a campaign. Uh, I told the board that uh, it, was, it would cost $150,000 for us to, to work on this transition, and that's uh, for a variety of kinds of things, including application fees and strategic plans that are required by NCAA and so forth. In addition to that... We need to get a nod from uh, the conference or a conference, NCAA conference, that we'd like to join. Uh, you you want to have that first before you okay. apply. Okay. 
and also since then, NCAA has moved the application process from June 1st to February 1st. So we were well underway, and the board was very supportive. Uh, and so uh, we started the campaign, and, uh, and I've got to tell you, Tony, we, we have met the campaign goals, and now, believe it or not, we have exceeded <laughs> the campaign goals. People are excited that about this. That was a good this. problem when you exceeded oh, the goals. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a wonderful problem to have, and, uh, and so we're, we are just doing gangbusters, and, uh, and I've written letters to everybody saying, thank you, we've, we've met the campaign, sure. and so forth. And while I was sending those letters, more money was coming in. It was, it was an exciting time, and athletics of course, they feel so positive about the experience when they feel like so many people are behind it. Tomorrow, uh, one of the, the conference that we're interested in joining is visiting our campus. Nice, and they've yeah. set a, uh, a visit team together, a uh, college president and an athletic director and so forth. And, uh, and this visit team is actually coming to kick the tires uh, and uh, take a look at Southern Wesleyan University and joining that conference. And uh, the, the early response from them uh, before this visit has been very positive. And I think this is, this is just a great, wonderful step. So we are going to absolutely have all the bells and whistles out tomorrow and uh, introduce them to Southern in a great way. So that is an important step. We'll hear from them in a, just a few weeks as we continue to move forward with sure. uh, applying to NCAA. So the money's in hand. Uh, we've hired our compliance officer. We've, uh, we're in the process of hiring a sports information director. Um, and uh, we have our women's administrator all set now. So we, uh, we're moving forward with our strategic plan, and we're going to apply February 1st on the deadline. And, uh, and then at that point, you, you wait for them to send their own visit team okay. as well. So it's a process. So now you're, you're not saying the conference, so I'm sure that's all. Yeah, it's shrouded in secrecy at this well, point. Well, it's not, but, but I don't know if they want me to say it on the okay. air. But, no, that's uh, fine. But we, it's, it's important. We understand, but if you want to break the story here, we're, we're fine. <laughs> we could, yeah, we could do that. Well, I'll give it some thought. We won't here. tell a lot of people. We'll just put it on Facebook and, and put it out on Twitter. There you but go. Outside of that. There you, you go. Outside of that. Keep it between us. Yeah, yeah that's right. Um, so last week I, I go to um, the mailbox and there you are. There's there he is. Yeah, nobody can see that right now. So just hang tight. Can you, they <laughs> no, can hear nobody, you, they, but nobody can see you. <laughs> I killed something. So <laughs> just keep talking. The lights are out. Um, <laughs> there you go. So it, I mean, it's a picture of you here, and it says retirement with a touch of class. Um, and so Southern Wesleyan is, I guess, at least thinking about a retirement a village there on campus. So yeah. talk about that and 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 why. I mean, why would a university be interested oh, in something like that. So many reasons. You know, this goes back in time. Uh, as I look back at uh, old board minutes and conversations and cabinets and so forth, uh, this goes back a couple decades or more in terms of a conversation. And, um, and so when I came, I started to look at 350 acres of property, uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Georgia, becoming the retirement yeah. destination in, in the United States. Um, the folks that we call halfbacks that move to Florida and then come halfway back, yeah, right? Uh, coming into the state, and uh, and I started to put together the the information demographics about uh, the number of retirees in the next twenty years, and it and it just literally blows your mind. Baby boomers are going are retiring starting now, retiring at uh, ten thousand uh, retirees a day for the next twenty years. 365 days a year. Now, you think about that. Where are they going to go? Well, my wife and I started talking about this again, and, we, and I said, where, where, where are we going to retire? We have no idea. Uh, we feel positive about our college experience. And we thought, oh, my goodness, how many people would feel the same way? Uh, and then I started to connect this whole intergenerational thing because I've been very interested in that, study yeah, that uh, yeah. in my life, and started to look at ideas related to a retirement community right on campus where retirees are integrated into the fabric of the of the environment and they're mentoring students and they're um, helping students identify their life purposes and life calling they're actually some of them could teach for us part-time um, they would have all the amenities uh, that retirement places would have but with the vibrancy of young people around take students on missions trips yeah. uh, all kinds of opportunities available uh, and then from the student perspective uh, being able to serve. They're already serving. And uh, to be able to serve our own retirement community and uh, work with them on a community garden and, and many, many, many concepts. So it makes perfect sense, intergenerational learning. Uh, my heart says that retirees have so much wealth of information and yeah. so much experience, and we put them in a nursing home and never talk to them. 
you bring them out into a campus community and they will live longer, live healthier, yeah. and live happier than any other place in their life. So it's a great win-win for well, a college. I have, a, I have an 80-year-old in my church who, <laughs> who hopes that you can get that done in what little lifetime she has. <laughs> so <laughs> let's make it happen quick. Okay? Let's make it happen. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we have covered um, a, a couple of studies that have kind of sent sent shockwaves through the evangelical movement about intergenerational um, uh, ministries. Uh, you know, back during the youth movement mm-hmm. that really came alive in the late 60s, early 70s in the evangelical church, it was very positive in reaching youth. But what happened is one of the downsides that we couldn't see at the time is we began to segment certain demographics in the church. So the youth are here, the children are there, the adults are there. Over the last decade, two decades, we really ramped that up so that you really have separate churches, the kids, right. the youth, yeah. and some of the studies are coming back saying this has been a huge mistake and we have to now. And they're not saying that you do away with the youth group or children's ministries, but the challenge is how are we going to bring these generations Absolutely. together that Absolutely. they're talking, that they're interacting with one another. Yeah. And this seems like just a solution, uh, yeah. one solution in um, a huge issue right yeah. now. Yeah, it really, it really is. And then you think about the amenities in in the upstate of South Carolina. You think about where we're located, uh, it's close to four miles really from a major institution with you know major sports. Yeah. You think about yep. the world class uh, city of Greenville. Yeah. Oh boy. Uh, I if mean, people haven't been oh. to downtown Greenville. I mean, you, it, it is worth. I'm gonna tell you this. It is worth a vacation. Yes, it is. It really is. It is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then the mountains, you know, 25 minutes away, yeah. and the ocean four hours away, and we've got Lake Hartwell four minutes away. I mean, we have so many things that uh, make this a retirement destination. And uh, so so it's time. It really is. So now we're in the process of continuing to develop plans, uh, trying to expand our um, entree into developers and, uh, and talking about the concepts. Uh, I think this could be the model program, and uh, I think it'll be copied uh, nationally. So, uh, so it, it's, it's big. Yeah. I, when I read the article, one of the things that I thought is, uh, you know, thank God for those that certainly came before you, oh. before me, and, and have been so um, insightful in getting property as it's become Absolutely. available. Absolutely. Because Southern Wesleyan has that space now to be able to do something like that. Absolutely. And, th- and you think about 7,000-plus colleges, universities in the United States and only a handful of them have oh, property. Oh. Most of them are just pushing the city limits and pushing, you know, housing developments. Yeah. So we are. I don't blessed. know if you've ever been at Trinity International. I, mean, I, have. Where, I yeah, have. And they're just locked. They are. There's no place to go. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, teach. Um, yeah. Ready. Do we I have think. that? Do you have that video? I think so. Okay. Well, for it? Yeah. Well, yeah. Let's go ahead and watch that, and then we'll talk about it. Renew. Reuse. Rejoice. Remember your leaders who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Hebrews 13, 7 and 8. You know, it's not often that we are given the opportunity to simultaneously relish the past and feed the future. But today, we have exactly that opportunity. Two great sons of Southern Wesleyan University, Dr. Virgil Mitchell and Dr. Roy Nicholson, our distinguished alumni of the century, did more to nourish the Wesleyan way of life than any two others that we know. They tilled the land and sowed the seeds of faith, compassion, and education throughout our community, our state, and our world. Now it's our turn to tend those fields and renew the cycle again. As our congregation of Alive Wesleyan Church prepares to move to a new location, Southern Wesleyan University is launching a campaign to purchase the building we're leaving in the heart of this campus. With your help and with God's infinite grace, the facility will become the Nicholson Mitchell Christian Ministry Center, where a new generation of young people will prepare to carry God's word into the world, that no one shall hunger for the truth. A gift opens the way and ushers the giver into the presence of the great. Proverbs 18, 16. To learn more about how you can help tend the garden that will feed our future leaders, please contact Southern Western University's Office of Development. Thank you.
All right. So um, all three of the hosts of this show, myself, Matthew, and Heath Mulliken, we are all graduates of Southern Wesleyan. All of us came through the religion department. So this is a project that really excites us. Yeah. Where are we with it? And um, what does the future look like for this? Yeah, it's very bright. It's a, it's a very uh, positive step uh, for Southern Wesleyan, but also for the church. Uh, we're uh, five months into the campaign, and uh, we've hit uh, 525,000 plus uh, already uh, pledged and given uh, to the program. And uh, I think uh, the way things are moving, it looks very positive for us to uh, be able to complete this project. And there are some, so, you know, as you move along, there are more and more ideas that you start to develop in it. Uh, because this thing, this thing could get pretty big for us uh, in terms of uh, what it means for uh, training the next generation yeah. of Christian ministry uh, leaders. So, so uh, we're pretty excited about yeah, it. I'd say it's neat, too, to think of you have a center that is just designed for the training of ministers, and you can fit different rooms, different classrooms, different situations that you just couldn't do in a normal yeah. classroom setting yeah. uh, because everyone has to use it. So yeah. It's, a great it, it's exciting to me too the way that it honors the property. I mean, so that that church has really just been you know, look historically there at the school just has been such a part of what people think of or, or what's around yeah. when you think of Southern Wesleyan. And now for for the school to embrace it in that way and to take it and it's it is a it is a respectful thing in my opinion. You yeah. know, as a way to as a way to use a, a piece of church property. Um, Yes, and our own Matthew T.G. produced that video as well. Well, yes. and sadly, you didn't. It didn't look right to everybody that saw. It. They, they got a cropped, <laughs> a, a extremely cropped version of it. But I figured out why. So, okay. there you go. it's all good. Again, uh, did we tell everybody what happened uh, heading into this show that everything died that that is building from the ground up? Yeah, so we, didn't, we didn't. We didn't give the whole story. There's a lot of bugs. Yes, <laughs> we're working out live. There you go. There you go. Mm, all righty. Um, so. In the last 10 years, one of the game changers in education has been Internet technologies. Um, every institution yeah. is impacted by this. So talk about it in the context of Southern Wesleyan University. Yeah, it's uh, another exciting step for us. Uh, one of the questions I asked when I was interviewing was, where are we in terms of our online program? And, and uh, so it has been a significant push uh, this past year and a half. And, uh, and I am excited to tell you that uh, we, we have uh, been – approved by SACS uh, to go online, ah, okay. and, uh, and they did that without a site visit and without additional information. Uh, they felt good about what we had uh, presented. They feel good about what we've done with the adult program already, and uh, so the, they've given us the green light. So in February, we're going to hit uh, our adult uh, market in particular uh, with uh, fully online on, uh, degree programs. Uh, Associate in Arts will be one of the first, as well as a Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Wow, okay. And then uh, we're hoping by mid-year we'll be uh, fully, our MBA will be fully online as well. And that will then allow us to start to reach out well beyond South Carolina and, uh, and really start to show uh, the world uh, a new way to do it. And it is a new way to do it. Uh, we're becoming a late adopter in this process. You can really take a hard look at the other institutions and what's being sort of promoted as yeah. as high in technology and uh, and I'm excited that uh, we're we have a completely different learning management system we've got a completely different approach uh, very intuitive um, students I think will find it to be uh, uh, to be almost a natural outgrowth of their iPhone I mean it's just very <laughs> intuitive and so uh, so it's it's an exciting thing for us and it's and also uh, the because of the quality uh, students will be able to actually move uh, back and forth some. So, uh, in other words, uh, let's say you start this uh, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration. Uh, let's say you start it on site in Columbia, and, uh, and you're about a quarter of the way through the program, and you get a new job opportunity in Texas. Uh, well, you can then migrate automatically uh, to the online program and complete wow. your degree. And I can tell you that not every school can say that. Mm -hmm. But that's because our outcomes, learning outcomes, our syllabus, everything is exactly the same, uh, either online or on-site. It's nice yeah. because some programs don't have that kind of integration. They don't. They yeah. really don't. So we, we have talked on this show about the whole online degree. And there are many in traditional education that are... You know they're concerned or maybe even threatened by it to some degree, and and that's understandable. Um, but the reality is this: that 
um, it's coming. Oh, it's, it's, well, here. it's here. Yeah, it's, it's here. here. Yeah, it's here. And yeah. and um, you you've got to have a presence in that space. You just do. Oh yeah. 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 And and yeah. so the debate's over. You oh, know, yeah. in terms of well, do we want to do this or not? Yeah. You know, you have to do it um, if you're going to be in the space. And you know, the faculty that uh, five ten years ago said this is not the way to do it. Um, you're watering down an educational process, so forth, are now coming out of the woodwork as a faculty, the most strongly supportive of what happens. And I can tell you why that is in one part. Uh, there are lots of reasons, but this one, uh, they will really resound. Um, and it's because there is not a silent member in the classroom. Uh, think about your experience yeah. Yeah. in a classroom yeah. environment. I mean, I taught in, in graduate education, and uh, I had three or four that were very verbal and always, mm -hmm. you know, did their, and, but you know, Sam in the back, yeah. never heard from Sam. He turned in his stuff, tried to get the grade. Well, Sam in an online environment has got to engage. And uh, it absolutely changes the learning experience for him. Yeah. And it does for everybody else because now they're hearing from Sam. And they, before they didn't hear from Sam. And he had some things to say that we all needed to hear. Yeah. So the online opportunity is available mm. for that. And, uh, and so we're going to take every, every mm. bit of advantage of that. One of the concerns has been you hear people talk about the community and their, their sense that we are not going to be able to generate community. But one of the things that we have seen over time is that there is a community that arises among oh, yeah. students. Um, and it's it's not apples to apples, but it, there's clearly a community. Yeah. And even in our own family, our own family dynamic here, we've experienced this. Our son is in Kuwait. He's in the military. And uh, we do video conferencing. We do texting. Yeah. And, and it's all in real time. And so he's halfway around the world. And yet, you know, right now, if I... You know, hey, son, did you use my, you know, I could text him right yeah. now because I can't find it. Yeah. And within seconds, I would have an answer. <laughs> um, and so there is still community. We've had times where we will get around the supper table, our dinner table on a Sunday, and we'll just pull him up, video conference him, and, you know. Put set, a plate in front of him. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, don't, that's right. don't do that. <laughs> Eat so your that, vegetables. So that's some of the differences. Yeah. <laughs> um, but my point is this, that you don't lose community. Yeah. You can build community in that environment. Yeah. Yeah, and, and the learning management system that you use can enhance that even more if they come from a social networking sort of perspective. Yeah. And uh, this one that we're using actually has some of that built in. So, uh, yeah, I'm excited about what, what that's going to mean for Southern. Let me bring a question from the chat room. So we have some pastors in the chat room, and uh, let's see here. They're asking about the scholarships for, uh, for pastors' families, for pastors' children, and I know that there are some changes recently in that. Yes, yeah, yeah, there are. The, uh, the Southern went through a process of hiring a consultant, and, uh, and they many years ago now, and they completely revamped their financial aid package, uh, created what was called a grid system, and everybody fell within a certain point in the grid system. And with that, uh, they eliminated a variety of things, and that was one of the things that was eliminated, the pastor-dependent um, scholarship program that had existed before. Uh, so when I came, I looked at that and I said, you know, this is, this is not a good thing. Uh, some pastor dependents actually ended up fine, uh, but many did not uh, in that grid. And uh, so we brought back the 50% tuition program for pastor dependents. And then on top of that, we, we allowed, um, we we're allowing uh, stacking on top of that. Now, not stacking of institutional aid, uh, because that's all institutional aid already, mm -hmm. but stacking of things like SEOG and Pell and if somebody nice. gets something from mm -hmm. a credit union nice. or if they, yeah. so we can stack. And, uh, and that is a huge step forward. As a matter of fact, I don't, I don't think anyone else is doing that. And so it really allows for a pastors to look at the total package and say, now this is actually a very affordable program. Is there any way that can be retroactive for a certain <laughs> pastor's kid who We're was there from back, 2001 to 2005? Yeah. <laughs> only going back 27 minutes. I'm oh, sorry. That's, that's, <laughs> We're not cutting any refund checks. No, okay. no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Last. That's right. <laughs> Too bad. It was good, T. Yeah. <laughs> You know, yeah, I found any time you change there. something for the better, you always have the next question. And so it isn't it's always no the fair. That's right. We want the other generations yeah. to suffer like we did. <laughs> That's right. That's right. You hear that with when you look at the dorms over at Southern Wesleyan and and invariably someone will well I remember when oh, I yeah. was in childs thirty oh, years cousins, ago. Yeah. <laughs> cousins, well even even recently. I mean cousins that are just 
you know, <laughs> 10 years my elder and yeah. would say, you know, in uh, in Stuart Bennett not having air conditioning right. and all that. Like, yeah. they're like, you've got it so easy now. Yeah, yeah they look yeah. at the new dorms and they say, those aren't dorms, those are apartments. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Um, uh, for many pastors, Wesleyan pastors here in the Southeast, uh, they receive their ministerial training, um, you know, through uh, SWU's religion department. Now, with the rise of Wesley Seminary at Indiana Wesleyan University, does that impact SWU um, and our you know Wesleyan institutions kind of working cooperatively together um, in, in um, in ministerial training? I mean, how does yeah. is there kind of a plan for the future? You know, I, I, I can't tell you there's an organized plan okay. yet for the future, but I, there certainly are a lot of ideas on the table. And, um, you know, one of the things we did was discontinued our, our um, master's degree um, in ministry uh, to not compete. Uh, and it was really uh, not filling a niche then with uh, Wesley Seminary. Uh, but as we now look at Wesley Seminary and we think about some of the other elements that could be incorporated in a master's degree program, that could really equip pastors uh, to do uh, sort of that next job experientially, uh, we're starting to come up with some really fun ideas uh, to create another master's program that fills an important hole uh, that seems to exist uh, in all of really the, the ministerial uh, sort of degree programs out there. Uh, so those things incorporate conversations like church planting, conversations okay. related to uh, recreation ministry, uh, ways to uh, help churches to grow in terms of leadership, uh, so leadership development kinds of components and a bunch of others. So, so those are fun things to think about. In terms of the uh, Nicholson Mitchell Christian Ministries program and our religion program itself, uh, that is an exciting process as we're rewriting our whole program. Okay. And, uh, and we're talking about relevant, we're talking about uh, cutting edge, we're talking about uh, ordination processes that have outcome kinds of components to them. And so uh, Russ Gonzalez was on campus recently. Yeah. We've been talking with him about uh, really ramping uh, that process up so that we can look at outcomes rather than just prescriptive courses. Uh, that will change a lot. And then the second thing we're going to really be incorporating is this really hard look at internships. And uh, because of the online components that we're doing and the way that they can interact, we're looking at some fun things where students will be off campus for an extended period of time uh, at, like you say, a 12 Stone or, okay. or New Hope or wherever, and uh, and they're literally working in that environment while taking their online yeah, courses see, yeah. from Southern. Invaluable. Oh, my goodness. So they get out, and, and now, and of course, pastors are already weighing in, and they're saying, this is perfect. Sure. Because we're struggling finding high-quality people to bring into the church. And this way, we test driving people. Right. And we can say, now that's a person we want back. She is perfect for, for this institution, yeah. this church. And so they can then wait till they graduate and pick them up. So uh, we're, we're really excited about what this whole thing is doing. And, uh, and I'll tell you, the religion faculty are thinking way outside the box. It is fun to see these people really take off. Yeah, it's good. And that that's an impact though just n n for the church. I mean, think about what that yeah. does for your DBMD board. Oh yeah. my, yeah. I mean, what is how, how does how does having that kind of experience I mean, it 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 extends out so much further beyond Well, it takes just care the, of that experience because part of the process is we have to have oversight to say, yeah, they have um, what it takes yeah, two yeah. years of experience <laughs> right before okay, they're well, ordained. Yeah, okay. yeah. and so now if that's incorporated within the educational piece yeah. um and on a you know real real time real site oh, that's right yeah, yeah. yeah. and yeah. real clock hours yeah you know the uh, right you you mentioned uh you know the 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 nicholson mitchell center we're keeping some of the sanctuary and we'll update it but basically the idea is that it's going to become a preaching sort of laboratory and students can get credit to going to the chapel, or they can get credit listening to our juniors and seniors preach. Mm -hmm. And so, hands-on experience again. And uh, nothing scares um, a, a nearly graduated person more than speaking in front of their peers. Yeah. I mean, it's a great way to get their hands Yeah, it's called into swimming that. with the sharks. It is. It really is. <laughs> yeah. All right. As we kind of wrap this interview up, uh, maybe there are some things that I didn't raise in the questions, but you'd like our listeners to know about Southern Wesleyan University. Yeah, I mean, I'll just I'll just end by saying that uh, Southern Wesleyan is just spinning a lot of plates. 
Uh, I mentioned that the first time we interviewed, <laughs> and, uh, and and it goes to a philosophy that uh, that the culture that we're creating is a culture of trust and a culture of yes. Uh, and that then requires us to say yes, and, you know, so ideas are coming. We just started a research and development fund and, uh, and a process for faculty and staff to submit ideas to get funding to be able to investigate new ideas, innovation. Yeah. Southern Wesleyan is going to be about and known for innovation. Uh, that is the future in higher education. It cannot be the same old, same old. As a matter of fact, people are getting tired of me saying it, but when people say, hey, let's do that like we did last year, and I look at them, and it's all I have to do is look now, and they say, or we could really change it dramatically. <laughs> because change is a very good thing, and, uh, and we really need to force that. So we're spending a lot of plates, lots of new degree ideas. Uh, we're landing, we just landed environmental science. Our board just approved this two weeks ago. And what better place than a Christian college oh, than environmental yeah. science? I mean, it's perfect. Absolutely. So I can't wait to see what that'll do for not only, you know, what we do in terms of physical things, uh, you know, wind generators and solar panels, but the idea of really teaching students what creation care is about. Yeah, exactly. Rather than yeah. all the stuff that otherwise goes with it. So exciting things coming down the pike. And my kids always lobbied for an atmosphere of yes when they were growing up in the home. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's right. <laughs> Yeah, and if they go to one and get a no, they go to the <laughs> yes. other to try to get the yes. Yeah, yeah they, they work for the yes. Yeah, yeah that's for sure. Uh, it's great. I'll mention just two more things. The, in terms of athletics, uh, the board also approved uh, men's and women's track for next fall uh. and men's and women's tennis for next fall. And those are uh, really four more sports. We're going to be doing some more in the next year. Uh, but uh, that uh, begins to really catapult some really neat things. And so uh, so we're going to move forward on building a track, and uh, we're doing some great uh, kinds of planning. Actually, this Thursday, uh, Landscape Firm uh, doing some master planning for us for our athletic fields. So nice. you're going to start seeing the campus change uh, pretty dramatically. Um, can I ask where they're going to put the track? It'll be right near the entrance. Yeah, right right in that. Okay, uh, yeah. That's going to be our new athletic quadrant. And so you cannot drive by right. and not see activity yeah, at yeah. that point. That's great. So, yeah. yeah, that's good. All right. Well, uh, Dr. Voss is going to stick with us here as we continue uh, with the rest of the show. And it's time for... Download of the week. Quiet, but there it is. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we're just beta testing all this today. so. <laughs> all right. So our download of the week. We have a couple here because one is iPhone specific. Uh, so I wanted to get one for Android. But... Google search for iPhone um, just came out. Uh, and iPad. Yeah, yeah last week. And for that. iPad. And right. so these are kind of Siri competitors, I guess you could say, on the same device. You want to demonstrate it here? Yeah. You well, can. Well, I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll let you demonstrate okay. it. Well, no, you just keep talking. <laughs> I'm looking. You keep talking. Um, yeah, if, if you've used Siri, I mean, there's some things that, like me, you probably like. Others, you have not found it to be quite a, as good. Or sometimes it comes back and just says the servers are busy. Um, and so Google released the search app for iPhone or iOS uh, products uh, last week. And I've got to say that I think it is way more reliable than Siri. I think it does a better job. Um, you can go to different websites where they've tested this, um, and you can just kind of see it in action. But I love... Yeah, it's fantastic. I, one of the highlights that I like of it is as you're dictating to it, it's putting up the text. I mentioned that back when we talked about the Nexus 7 tablet. That was one of my favorite things. When you were dictating an email, whatever it was, Siri just listens, and it makes you kind of lose your train of thought um, to just be talking to it and not remembering exactly where you're at in this sentence or paragraph that you're trying to construct google's putting it there and it, it's it's helpful it's, it's just this real little time thing. it's so quick, yeah it man. is it just gets it there. here i'm about got it here let's see you keep talking <laughs> yeah I, I i i haven't installed it on the ipad yet there no no i said but hey here it is okay so let me switch to it i have it on my iphone what that's hey. the wrong thing let's try again <laughs> <laughs> beta testing we're just having a good old time here. Guys. so what you're gonna throw you're gonna throw the screen up there yeah okay all right, there we go. Okay, so now everybody can see. Now I turned this around so you guys could see, but I tried that earlier. Yeah, and don't worry about it. Everything just went horrible, horribly wrong. So here we go. Let's see uh, what we can get here. Get me directions to Southern Wesleyan University. Southern Wesleyan University is 21 minutes from your location by car. Here are your directions. There okay, now go. ask it a sports question. Um, uh, well, hold on, I'll let you do it. Hold on. 
<laughs> I'm not. <laughs> what was that? Okay, okay no, one more time, Tony. All right, so <laughs> that's, I'm well, that's why you're ready. putting me on the Here we go. Here we go. Who do the Wisconsin Badgers play in football this week? All right, so that didn't get Wisconsin. It doesn't understand what Wisconsin is. That's why I was checking. Let's try one more time. Let's try one more time. How was the last Wisconsin Badgers game? It didn't. It gave me a little bit, but not not too much. Give me try one more time. I'm ready. Really pronounce it. Here we go. Who did the Green Bay Packers play this week? The Packers beat the Cardinals 31 to 17. Okay, so that was the last game. So as you can see, it's not not perfect. None of these yeah. are perfect yet. But there are uh, some certain things that this is doing better than what Apple's doing with Siri. Let me try one other uh, here. Who starred in Forrest Gump? Here is the cast of Forrest Gump. There you go. There you go. Um, I find it particularly good with directions. Very good with directions. Um, have I used it a lot on Sunday and didn't didn't have to repeat anything. Now I only put three or four. I asked for three or four different locations, but it was spot on every time. Hey, so when we gave directions, you know, we just gave away our studio location, our secret location. <laughs> it flashed up there on the screen, so now we wow. can have visitors. If you were paying attention, <laughs> you know where we are. People know where the bunker is yeah. now. Oh, um, man. I, Didn't think of that. <laughs> another download that we have this week, and this is one you can tell me about. So um, there, there's a show called Android Weekly, and one of the guys on there, whenever he has a choice for apps, it's always some – it's a, a, a functional app. He's not much into – widgets and things of that nature but he actually has run across a, a widget for android that he really likes called zuper widget so uh, we'll recommend that if you're an android user um, go ahead and test it for us and send us an email or give us a voicemail and tell us how you liked it all right let's keep going here and move on to they said it read my lips i'm going to say this again I've never taken steroids or HGH. I took the initiative in creating the internet. The Macintosh, of all the machines I've ever seen, is the only one that meets that standard. Well, I'm not a crook. If you, if you know what you're doing here, slide, slide out. Contributes to LifeWay's omni-channel plan for the digital world. We want to provide life-changing resources to churches and individuals in the format they prefer. Tim Vineyard, president of LifeWay Christian Stores, promoting LifeWay's new e-reader app. Source, Baptist Press. Welcome to the One Minute Apologist. One minute apologist. If you had one minute Apologia. to be able to unpack for the audience. We interview the world's leading apologists to provide credible answers to curious questions. Dr. Moreland, what is the lost virtue of happiness? The notion of happiness today means a feeling of excitement or pleasure. That's a good thing. Mm -hmm. But happiness up through the centuries, back among the ancient Greeks and the Old Testament and Jesus, meant a life of wisdom, virtue, and character. Now, if the purpose of life is to be happy, and if happiness means what it means today, namely, do I have a feeling of pleasure and satisfaction inside, then my focus is going to be on me and how things are making me feel. If happiness means that I'm to pursue a life of wisdom and character and virtue, then Jesus teaches that my focus will be on serving other people because he says if you want to gain your life, you need to lose it. So the focus will be outward. It, I will, of course, want to have a feeling of pleasure from time to time, but I'm not going to be upset and I'm not going to be dysfunctional if I'm not always feeling happy. My purpose instead is to become happy in the sense of virtuous, and you gain that by learning to give yourself away to other people for Christ's sake. The issue is not, is there an app for that? There is an app for that. It's technically feasible to do. <clears throat> Thad Haw, Associate Professor of Political Science at the University of Utah and a researcher at Voting Technologies Forefront, presenting the challenges of voting with our smartphones. Source, Yahoo News. Speaking of Windows RT, I got, I have my new Surface. We, You know, it's interesting because there's been a lot of interest around the building. I, I had to, people 
pry it, reports <laughs> taking it from me. I had to pry it away. I heard everybody was trying to steal it to from you. To do my review. <laughs> Fortunately, Alex Gumpel got his. You were able to play with his a little oh, yeah. bit. Uh, what do you think? How do you like the, the new Surface tablet? It's really easy to figure out. That was the first thing I noticed. And there's a couple of different things on here that even the Apple iPod does, or I, iPad doesn't have. For example, if you turn it upside down, it'll switch around for you. Well, what I really like is this this Metro interface. Now, I know Microsoft says don't call it Metro anymore. Yeah. They started it with the Windows Phone 7. And the idea is these are tiles, but they're also live tiles. And you can notice mm -hmm. them changing from time to time. For instance, that's my email tile. And it's just scrolling bit by bit through a number of emails. Here's uh, a, a, a people tile that has uh, messages from Twitter and Facebook. Here's weather. Uh, and, and by the way, when you tap on a tile, the, these, these are, for the most part, beautiful applications. A lot of them come from uh, Microsoft. Now, um, you can only download Microsoft's well, different applications yeah, right now, right? Yeah, exactly. This has the Microsoft Store on it, then very much like the iPad. Um, I think people will consider this a benefit because it does mean that Microsoft has vetted all the apps and in theory this should be a lot more secure. Mm -hmm. Here's the store and you can see there are literally already thousands of apps. Remember that this is a brand new platform. This is not Windows 7 or 8. Won't run standard Windows apps at all. Nor is this Windows Phone. Won't run those apps. It will only run apps specifically written for Windows RT. It's running an ARM processor. Um, I bought, there are two different kinds of uh, keyboards you can get with it. It's by itself, it's just a tablet. And you can buy it uh, standalone as a tablet. This is the home key if you do that. Ooh, cool. and, it, and it has a pop-up uh, keyboard, so it's, it's no problem to uh, type on it. Very, it. Actually, the keyboard looks very much, let's, let me run one note and I'll, I'll create a new note and, uh, and show you. The keyboard looks very much like when I start typing the iPad keyboard, and it's just as typable. And as you mentioned, there is a horizontal uh, road that uh, you can also do that. And this is very much like the iPad. But it does point out one thing that's very different from the iPad. It is a 16 by 9 screen. So it's widescreen. Oh, wide and so screen. when you're in this orientation, the, the portrait orientation, it looks kind of funny. Mm -hmm. It looks a little too tall. Uh, this is something some other tablets have a similar uh, problem with. Uh, I don't think people are going to use it as a tablet. It feels thick, clunky. Ironically, it's the same weight and even the same width as the Apple iPad, but it feels thicker and heavier just because of the nature of its design. Um, our first quote here, and they said it uh, has to do with an uh, e-reader app that Lifeway has put out. So... As soon as I told TG this is, you know, about Lifeway's idea about putting out an e-reader, right away, your reaction was really my reaction. I'm not sure that I'd want to do this, get out of like the Yeah, Amazon. it'd be like Wesley Publishing House where you could only read it on that. Well, they're not – so Amazon and Kindle is everywhere. You, that's exactly. just, It's just everywhere. So why not publish your books so that people can use those books yeah. everywhere? Uh, as opposed to only this device. Yeah. But anyway. So there's one neat feature, though. So Lifeway is trying to get all their books eventually in digital form, and so they're creating an ecosystem. So right now there are 8,000 books. So I want to demonstrate the app here, um, and it comes stock with um, the, the Bible app. So here's, here's the Bible app. It's the Holman Bible I I, I'd be honest, I'm pretty ignorant about the Holman. Yeah, they push uh, that very hard at Lifeway, and I'm I am too. So yeah, that gives I, me something to for look the into. first time. I had a student in the class who that you know he read from a translation, and I thought, well, I've never heard that. I said, what translation is that? I said, well, it's the Holman. So, but anyway, it comes with that. So here, here we are now. Here is one little neat feature. So. They have whoa! I don't even know what I just did there. Um, they have it's some so intuitive. books. It's such a yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it knows what you want it to do. That's right. Just think um, it. Just think it. So I just I downloaded some books real quick. They have some free books in the library, and so here's a Max Lucado. And so um, let me see if I can. Here we are. What they've done in all the books in their in their digital ecosystem. Um, if there's a passage of scripture, you can tap on it, and then what it does is it pulls up that whole passage. Mm -hmm. um, so again, they have 8,000 books within their library, and any, any book that has a scripture reference, it's going to, you're going to be able to pull that up in the book. So, so, I mean, so if you wanted to talk about kind of what this is like, so in the Kindle application, you can tap on any word, and it'll pull up a dictionary, yeah. and it'll mm -hmm. define that and give you like a thesaurus and all that kind of good stuff about that. And this is kind of kind of that. Now it would be cool if in the Kindle application, if I could download 
you know, the ESV or whatever it was, and if it knew all of that. So that is certainly an advantage in this kind of reading, I guess. But again, even in a even in a Kindle book, you could have those passages linked if you formatted your book correctly. It would jump you outside of the app yeah. to go to a web page that would show you that scripture. But it still is doable. It may and if Kindle, I don't know, I haven't ever tried this, but you can build a web browser inside of an application. So Kindle may have a way to where you could click sure. that and it would open up yeah. Safari inside the Kindle app and take you right to that. There's ways to to do this. So that's a cool idea. Let me show you something that I thought was a real fail here. So um, can you see on the bottom? I don't know what they're seeing, man. Yeah, yeah, they can see whatever you're seeing. Yeah, this right here, like on the bottom, you're supposed to be able to move the slider so that the text size, it never moves, and the text is always so small that you need a magnifying glass. So... So uh, there's a glitch. <laughs> there's a glitch right out of you know out of the gate with this. I, I will say this: if you read the article, if I'm reading the article right, they're talking about trying to create a, a system. So right now, you tap on a passage of scripture, it brings it up. It brings up the passage. Well, what they're hoping to do is build on this and have other resources that will come up. So okay, I'm in. I'm in the Bible now. I can go to this commentary or a Bible dictionary. It, right. Or if you be, if they begin to build that out. From a pastor's point of view, from a study point of view, I'd love to have Steve here to talk about logos a little bit. I don't know what all they what they're doing, but mm. that's one of the sad things to me. Logos is so expensive. stinking expensive. Mm. He, and it's he said, so expensive. He said this is he did, he paid five thousand mm. dollars. Steve did five thousand dollars for like the ultimate that are, they're going to be doing an upgrade which will cost him an additional 2000 and if you don't do the upgrade it's going to lock you out of some of the other stuff that it, you have it's previous. highway robbery he yeah. should get his $5000 back mm-hmm. yeah. now if if and if there are out people listening out there if any way we've got that wrong please please let us know I mean, yeah, and if Logos would like to sponsor the show, then we'll talk about we'll love Logos. So <laughs> if they want to give the show a free, <laughs> you know, full blown version. Wow. <laughs> yeah, we'll be glad. We'll be glad. Now we know your price. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, real quick here, we can't cover everything. Um, so the I, I, this story of voting with our phones. Um, the, the the article about this was fascinating because. Um, this is a Yahoo. This comes from Yahoo News. Um, there are places now I wasn't even aware of where they are allowing internet voting for organizations, even small townships, things of this nature. Um, but you know, the the point of the article is that with the problems that we had with the traditional system of voting, you know that, and and we historically you can go back and see fraud. He says, well, you know. That on steroids is what it's like when you get into a digital world. Mm -hmm. And so they, for instance... They're already in a digital world. Well, in some... You're not not voting. You used to vote by taking the piece out of the newspaper and then sending that back in. As my understanding is like way back when, the way that it would be. It'd be printed there, your ballot. You'd get your newspaper, get the ballot out and do it all. Well, it's digital now. I went in and pushed buttons earlier this morning and... There was no piece no, of good paper point. that came out or good anything point. like that. Um, he, he's getting into the idea of, of voting via the Internet. And so Washington, I believe it was the, the city of Washington, set up something where you could do that. And they invited uh, someone to uh, a group of technology people to try to hack in the system. And they were successful. And the only thing they did is once you were done voting, then all of a sudden the Michigan fight song would start playing. <laughs> <laughs> there you and, go. And, and, in this case, and in this case, it wasn't nefarious, um, but he says this uh, about, about um, it was, yeah, Washington, D.C., the, de- they de- the debut of this. It was Alex Halderman of the University of Michigan. They hacked in. Uh, but the, here's the last sentence. Though the Michigan team's... Uh, uh, antics turned out to be above board. Stewart recalls they discovered that the Chinese and the Iranians had beat them to it. Oh wow! So while they had broke, while they yeah. were able to get in, 
they found out later, whoops, we weren't the first ones who got in and hacked the system. There were two other countries who had already hacked the system. I'd be curious if we just let the whole world vote in our presidential (laughs) elections, wouldn't it? Thus is the concern. (laughs) Wow. (laughs) You know, I I see a movie coming out of this. Well, and and, and listen, I mean, uh, NBC ran a story last night talking about how there's so much world interest in the election of the president here in the United States. So there are countries... Some countries rooting for Obama, some rooting for Romney. And so what if you could gain, if, if, if we have internet voting, what if you could hack in and yeah. game the system? That's right. So, you know, 600 million Americans voted. <laughs> That's right. That's right. A few more than we have. Yeah, yeah. Six great. times the yeah. voting population That's of right. America. That's turned right. out. That is great. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe right. we could, for the people that don't vote, then they could, like, figure out a way of selling their vote. I mean, <laughs> you could... You could do that, say. <laughs> that's <laughs> that's right. right. On eBay. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I mean, didn't we talk to that's just bad. some people who decided they weren't voting yeah. at all? They just, you could that's right. Say, <laughs> In a downturn go. economy, that could be a great way to turn things Any around. Any Israelis <laughs> that would like me to cast my vote. Oh, oh man. <laughs> said, Any, <laughs> In a down economy. Yeah. That's bad. Man. Yeah. It's like, well, I'm not going to vote, but I'm going to make a couple bucks out of it. See, so. I, I don't think that's right, but what I'll do is I'll charge to put people on eBay to set them up for the heavy no, votes. No, no, yeah, the <laughs> you haven't voted yet. You haven't voted that's yet. Right. So we got two up for bids here. That's the highest right. bidder, that's name right. your candidate. Yeah. I'm not going to leave the show until I get 100 bucks. <laughs> Goes oh. to Nicholson Mitchell campaign. <laughs> Todd, Todd's holding the show hostage. We That's can't right. go off the air. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, other two stories you're not going to be able to cover. The Surface tablet. Um, I've been reading lots of reviews like it's that. interesting. You know, we got you got cold feet about it. Yeah. Uh, but it's I it's turning out it. it's turning out to be a little bit more interesting than I expected it to. It's getting a better reception. I think reception I'm going to get it, I... but I'm still I'm holding. I want to wait till. Around Christmas and still see, um, but I'm 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 pleasantly happy with yeah. reviews, and yeah. the reviews are basically saying this: great hardware. Um, they still need to develop the app system, but yes. Tom Merritt of uh, the Twit Network is one voice who's saying that that is going to happen. He said hmm. developers are getting on board with this, and he said I think that it's one of the more compelling yeah. things that's come along in a while. Well, I'll be interested to play with it when you get it. Yes, I know you yeah. will. <laughs> All right. And our other, the One Minute Apologist, uh, would really recommend the book there that J.P. Uh, Moreland, that's who was speaking, he's from a Talbot School of Theology, um, Love Your uh, Love Your God With All Your Mind. Um, and uh, we'll put a link into the show for that as well. Let me let you know what's coming up next week. We have Beth Peterson, who will be in studio, and Priscilla Hammonds will be joining us via Skype. We're then going to talk about the Mystery Church Shopper. Um, that'll be the first half of the show. The second half of the show, Stevan Sheets will come and join us via Skype. We're going to talk about our, our Christmas list. Uh, we'll have some oh. gadgets on there and things that we recommend. Um, yeah, we're not giving away Christmas gifts. Oh, okay. Week. I was yeah. going to say, it's going to be the most popular show ever. <laughs> yeah. Todd was going to... Todd was going to be back next week. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I know where you live. That's right. Um, the week after that, on November the 20th, uh, we'll have Dr. Joanne Lyon. She joins us about this time every year, and really looking forward to that. And and we're going to talk a lot about compassionate ministries. That is really where her heart is. And um, in the past, with World Hope, mm-hmm. we saw that. And so I want to talk about that. And we have some stories. Um, Tej has been doing a good job, and Priscilla has been doing a good job getting us some stories that we can talk about when we have her on. November the twenty seventh to finish out the mic we'll have the, the mic the month we'll have Phil Stevenson here we'll talk about his book the Ripple Church multiply your ministry by parenting new churches and also we'll talk about his website and what he's doing in ministry now all right uh, Master T G where can our listeners find you on the internet I can be found at MatthewTG.com. all right and so now Doctor Voss be honest here do you Twitter and stuff like that no. No, uh, no. We, we, need, to, we need to set up a Twitter for yeah, time. Yeah, yeah, probably, yeah, yeah, we'll yeah. Twitter for you. I used to have a Facebook account. Actually, it's probably still out there, but it's the wrong everything. <laughs> and uh, and my, my secretary is saying, you know, I really need to do a blog. And I said, I just, yeah, I got to do that, you know, but. Don't have the time, do you? Well, it's it's pretty interesting how much time, you yeah. know, and then so you have to write something every you week. You know so. what, what big name people do? Uh, they actually have their staff working yeah. for them so. well the, the fallacy there was in the first statement big name people. yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's the problem right there i'm still yeah. thinking the technology show ought to do all his twitter updates and so we could have fun with it oh i'm sure you could 
Well, if it drives enrollment, I'm fine with it. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Very pragmatic. There you go. All right. Uh, uh, we want to um, wish uh, Heath a speedy recovery out there. Mm. Uh, hope that he gets to feeling better and, and uh, look forward to having him back next yeah. week. Teach, thank you for working through all the glitches this episode. And it's, Well, my apologies for all the glitches <laughs> to our listeners. No, no, it's just part of it sometimes. All right. Um, if you want to do any further research on things we've discussed today, you can find all the links to the stories we covered at our website, thetechnologyshow.com. If you want to contact us like Paul Tillman did, send your emails to thetechnologyshow at gmail.com. Or better yet, yes, please. Please, this please. makes me so happy when you call us. Please. 3049 Theology. It, you're not gonna, we're not going to answer the phone. It's voicemail. And uh, you just leave your little message there, and we'll play it on the show. I guarantee it. That's right. As always, thanks for joining us. Goodbye, everybody. Bye. Bye. There's no one here to say adios.